this uh, talk today uh, was the last topic in this course, which is the entropy balance. Entropy balance. Uh, if you recall, Shabab, when we started this course, in the first class, I have just drawing this system, and I told you if we have any general system, uh, we can apply the law of mass action that energy cannot be created or destroyed. And we said if we have energy input to the system, and part of energy is leaving the system, and if this system undergo a process, part of energy, the remaining energy should be stored within this system. And we have defined the conservation of energy principle based on energy cannot be created or destroyed. We said that energy input to the system, the difference between energy input and energy output should equal to the change of energy within this system. If this system is undergo a process, let's say from a state one to a state two, okay? So we call it the conservation of energy principle because energy is conserved. It cannot be destroyed, it cannot be created, just energy can be transformed from one form to another. And we said like this, we have mass. Mass cannot be created or destroyed unless we have a body that is moving actually with the, with the speed more than the speed of light. In this case, part of mass, as we said, based on Einstein relation, the part of mass can be converted actually to have this very high kinetic energy. But otherwise, under normal condition, also mass cannot be created or destroyed. For this case, for the entropy, can we call actually the conservation of entropy? Can we call it like that? Or we just, we have to say the entropy balance. We cannot say entropy conservation. What do you think? Can we say entropy conservation of entropy? Uh, no, because uh, we can't uh, generate. Uh... Because, because we can generate entropy within the system. As I told you, if this system undergo process from one to two, any actual or real process should result actually in some losses, like the friction losses. Let's say we have flow that is moving in at you. In this case, we have some friction losses. But this friction losses will appear in the form of what I should have. Friction with the wall. If we have flow in this direction, we have friction with the wall. This friction losses will appear in the form of heat. This heat will be absorbed by the molecules. But actually, this heat, we cannot convert it to work. We cannot benefit this heat. Just this heat is used actually to be converted to kinetic energy of the molecules. Just the molecule be, will be more active in this case. So this energy losses due to any kind of losses will be absorbed by the molecules and the molecule will dissipate it. So we cannot convert this heat into, into water. And due to this energy dissipation and due to this kinetic energy motion of the molecules, it is translated to what we call the entropy generation within the system. So some more entropy is generated. So if you ask anybody what is entropy, he will tell you this is a measure of randomness, uh, randomness motion of the molecules. So due to the irreversibilities within the system, all of the losses within the system will appear in the system in the form of what is about of entropy generation. In this case, the entropy should be increased in this case. But as entropy can be generated within the system, and actually it will be generated, because any actual process should have some losses, like what we have learned in second law of thermodynamics, and we should have some losses. And as we should have some losses, then in this case we should have some entropy is generated within the system. So as entropy can be generated or created within the system, so in this case we cannot say we have the conservation of entropy. Entropy is not conserving. Just we can say we have entropy balance in this case. But let's say if we have entropy input to the system, to this system, in the form actually due to mass transfer or due to heat transfer, we can have entropy transfer to the system. And also if this system undergo a process and we have actually entropy out of this system, and during this process, we have the change, change of entropy or within this system. And in addition to that, we have to have what within the system during this process, we have to have entropy generation in this case. And based on that, we can get the entropy balance. We can say entropy in minus entropy out. That should equal to what? The change of entropy within the system. But plus what? We have to add what in this case, Shabab? We have to add the entropy generation in this case. And this is the difference between the entropy generation, between the entropy balance, 
and the energy conservation. Energy is conserved. We cannot say here we have energy generated. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. Cannot be generated. But here entropy can be generated due to the losses within within this system. Okay, Shabab? This entropy is a property that is calculated in, this is the total entropy calculated in kilojoule per kilo. Okay? We can write down also the entropy in the rate form. We can say rate of entropy in minus rate of entropy out plus the rate of entropy generated. That should equal to ds by dt within, within this system. And this is actually the rate form of the entropy. This rate form, my shabab, is calculated in kilowatts per kilo. Okay, so entropy is calculated in kilojoule per kelvin. The rate of entropy is calculated in kilowatt, kilowatt per kelvin. So let's analyze this balance as and consider the first case when we have a closed system. So if we have a closed, closed system, okay. But uh, let me first, before we proceed to the case of closed system. We said entropy in or entropy out. So entropy can come into the system or it can leave the system. So what are the form of entropy transfer? What are the forms of energy transfer? We said energy in minus energy out. This is the energy transfer. We said energy can transfer by heat, energy can transfer by work, and the energy can transfer due to mass transfer. Okay. So if we have mass transfer, then we can have energy transfer. By what are the mechanisms actually for entropy transfer? Also, entropy can transfer by what? By heat. And we have the entropy transfer due to heat. By definition of entropy, entropy is equal to integration of delta Q over delta Q over T. And if this temperature is constant, we can take it outside. So that will equal to the heat transfer divided by, divided by the temperature. If we have more than one source to the system, we can just add the summation, summation of QK divided by TK. K shabab is 1, 2, 3. So it is summation of Q1 divided by T1. So plus Q2 divided by T2. Or we can say summation of QK divided by TK. So this is the heat transfer, and this is the temperature at which the heat is transferred either into the system or leaving, or leaving the system. So this is the first mechanism of entropy transfer. Entropy can transfer by heat, and by definition, entropy is equal to integration of delta Q over T. If temperature is constant, I can take it outside, so it will be integration of delta Q, then it will equal to Q over T. And if we have more than one source for heat transfer within the system, then we can just add the summation side. So if we have a system, let's say we have some heat is added, some heat is rejected here, or some heat here is rejected to another system. So if we have more than one source for heat, then we can add the submission sign. But this is the first form. But does entropy, can entropy transfer by work? Can entropy transfer by work, Ashura? Yes. No. Energy cannot, entropy cannot be transferred by work because work actually is done by the machine itself, not done by the working fluid. Okay. So in this case, entropy cannot, we cannot generate machine on the blade or something, entropy on the blade, or we cannot have entropy transfer on the blade of a turbine or something. Entropy is associated with the, with the working flame. So we cannot have actually, and the, and the work is produced by the machine itself, not by the working flame. So entropy cannot be generated due to work. Entropy is generated due to heat because this heat is absorbed by the working flame. And by definition, S heat is equal to integration of delta Q over T. So the third mechanism actually is the entropy transfer due to mass transfer. And in this case, the entropy will equal to mass multiplied by the specific entropy, equal to the mass of the flow multiplied by the specific, the specific entropy. And based on the third law of thermodynamic shiver, we have temperature at temperature equal to zero Kelvin. We have the entropy is equal to zero. So if we have a flow at temperature equal to zero Kelvin, that means its entropy is zero in this case. But actually the absolute zero Kelvin is a temperature that is hard actually to be achieved. So whenever we have a flow at a given temperature, that means this flow actually have entropy in this case. So entropy can be transferred by heat and it is equal to Q divided by T, the heat transfer divided by the temperature at which the heat is transferred and it can transfer by mass and it is equal to mass multiplied by the specific 
there is a specific input. Okay. طيب, let's apply this for a closed system and see how we can calculate how we can calculate the as we said, the enter be generated within a system is a measure of the losses within the system. So if you want to evaluate the performance of any engineering system, look at the losses, then in this case you have to calculate the entropy be generated within the system. Okay? Then it will give us an indication about the losses within the system. Okay. By a new example of something, so it will be a problem either closed system like what we have learned in chapter 4 or open system like what we have learned in chapter 5, like a turbine or compressor. Then I will ask you to calculate the entropy generation for a given process. By for a closed system, if we have, if we have a closed system, then we can just apply the entropy balance, so entropy N minus entropy out plus what is your plus the entropy generation, that should equal to the change of entropy within the system. The change of entropy of the system undergo a process, let's say, from a state one initial state to a final state. For a closed system, mass is constant because the system is closed. So delta S will equal to mass. We can take it as common multiplied by the final entropy S2 minus the initial entropy S1. But what about actually this term? Those are the form of entropy transfer. Entropy can transfer by heat, so it will equal to summation of QK divided by TK, summation Q1 divided by T1 plus Q2 divided by T2. This is the heat transfer. So this is the heat transfer, the heat transfer, and this is the temperature at which the heat is transferred. So if we have a system and the heat is transferred to the surrounding, so this temperature is the temperature of the surrounding. So we call it actually the surrounding, so the surrounding temperature, or the temperature at which this heat is transferred. Okay. So if heat is transferred from a system to a surrounding, so the temperature of the surrounding, this is the temperature TK, the temperature at which the heat is transferred. And the QK is the heat transfer to the system. And the energy can transfer by mass. Mass multiplied by entropy. But in case of a closed system, do we have mass transfer? No. So this term, we don't have this term in this case. Then based on this entropy balance, we can say the entropy generation for a closed system should equal to mass multiplied by S2 minus S1 plus what is about? We can take this term to the other side, so it would be negative sign, so summation of QK divided by TQ. And this is how we can calculate the entropy generation for a closed system. Okay, it will equal to entropy generation equal to mass multiplied by final entropy minus the initial entropy minus summation of QK divided by divided by TK. If you recall, Shabab, I told you for any process we have learned how to calculate delta S. This term S2 minus S1 is the term delta S. And we have learned in this chapter, chapter 7, how to calculate delta S. If the working fluid is steam or refrigerant, so in case of steam or refrigerant 174A, then in this case I will be using the tables. I will be giving for you, let's say, the condition at state number one at the inlet, at the initial state, give you the condition at the final state. Then in this case I can go to the table and read the value from the table S2 and S1, then I can calculate delta S if the working fluid is steam or refrigerant. And in case we said in case if we have the working fluid is in incompressible substance, incompressible substance, we have proved the relation based on the TDS relation that delta S is equal to C average multiplied by ln T2 over T1. And this C average is calculated for incompressible substance at the average temperature from table A3. Okay, we have proved this relation. And we said in case of gases, we have two approaches. In case of gas, we have constant specific heat, constant specific heat analysis, and we have variable specific heat. I'm just reminding you, for constant specific heat, we have the whole of two relations to calculate delta S. Delta S C average, C V average, ln T2 over T1 plus R ln V2 over V1. And another relation function of CB, CB average, ln P2 over P1 minus R ln B2 over B1. It doesn't matter 
three. I'm just reminding you how to calculate delta S. Following the constant specific heat analysis. Variable specific heat analysis, we said delta S will equal to S naught 2 minus S naught 1 minus R lim V2 over V1. And we said this S naught 2 and S naught 1 are calculated from tables A17 to A25. Okay? So those are the whole cases, Shabab. How to calculate delta S? In case of the working fluid is a steam or refrigerant, I will be using the table. This is the most easy case. Type in case of the working fluid is incompressible substance, like solid or liquid, then in this case, based on the TDS relation, we have developed this relation to calculate delta S. C average lead T2 over T1. If it is gas, in this case, you have to decide either following constant specific heat analysis, you will be using either of those two equations, which we have developed earlier, or in case of variable specific heat, I will be using tables, but the equation is S02 minus S01. S0 is the temperature dependent part of the entropy. You can get from the table, but don't forget minus R lim B2 over B1. And this is how we can calculate delta S. But what about this heat transfer, Shabab? We said this is the heat transfer. For a closed system, Shabab, this term should be calculated from the first law equation. Q minus 1 is equal to what? Delta U. So if I told you in any problem, I have a gas in a piston cylinder device, or I have a closed system, any problem on the closed system, like what we have learned in chapter four. You have learned in chapter four how to calculate, apply the first law of thermodynamic, Q minus work equal to delta U, then I can calculate this heat transfer from the first law of thermodynamic. Now I will be asking you to calculate the entropy generation. So just you will take this heat transfer, come back here and substitute it here. This heat transfer verb should be substituted with its sign. So it should be positive if it is added. And it should be negative if it is rejected. And it should be zero if the system is what? Well, if the system is adiabatic. Okay? So this term, heat transfer, the heat that we calculate from the first law of thermodynamics. Okay? It should be substituted with its sign either positive, negative, or it can be zero in case when we have an... Is that clear, Shabab? Yes, clear. Yes. So, I just try to follow. I have just written many equations here, but this is how to calculate delta S depending on the working flow. And how to calculate Q? Q is calculated from the first law of thermodynamic. Then, we have to substitute it with its sign. So actually, we don't have anything new, just it will be the same problem, either closed the system or open system. Inshallah, I will write down the equation for a closed system, for open system as well. So you will solve like what we have learned in chapter four and chapter five, apply the first law of thermodynamic, calculate the heat transfer and the work. Then I will be asking you to calculate the entropy image. Then in this case, you will take the heat transfer and substitute in the entropy generation, calculate delta S as well, and then substitute to calculate the entropy generation. So this is in case of closed system. In case when we have an open system, okay? Any device, turbine, compressor, nozzle, or anything undergo a process, let's say from initial state to a final state. So let's consider first of all for a steady flow devices, if we have a steady flow. If we apply the entropy equation in the rate form, so we can say rate of entropy N minus rate of entropy R plus the rate of entropy generation, that should equal to dS by dt within the system. If the process is steady, that means actually the term d by dt is equal to zero. We don't have a change of style in case of steady flow. That means the rate of entropy generation for a steady flow open system, that should equal to what? S out minus S in. So S out and S in. We said entropy can transfer by what? By heat, it will equal to summation of QK divided by TK, or summation of Q over T. And uh, entropy can transfer by mass, which is end rate of entropy, so it will be rate of mass for rate multiplied by entropy. But this is out, N minus out. We can take it to the other side, it will be what, Shabab? Out minus N. So it will be M dot exit multiplied by rate of entropy S dot exit. 
M dot exit, sorry, S exit, okay? But if we have more than one outlet, then in this case, I have to add the summation. So it will equal to summation M dot exit, S exit, minus summation is M dot inlet multiplied by the entropy at N. Similar to the case of energy equation. This is the due to the entropy transfer due to mass. Here, mass out or mass in. But we have another mechanism here due to the heat transfer. Then in this case, we have to add here minus summation of Q dot K divided by T. And this is the equation we use to calculate the entropy generation for an open system. This entropy generation, as you have in this case, is calculated in kilowatt per kilometer because this rate of heat transfer is in kilowatt. All of these terms actually are in kilowatt. Okay. This is a specific entropy in kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin multiplied by kilogram per second. So it will be kilojoule per second, which is kilojoule per second per Kelvin, which is kilowatt per Kelvin in this case. Okay. But if we have single stream. Single stream means what is your We should oh, remove, oh, 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 oh. remove the summation sign. And in this case, M dot inlet is equal to M dot outlet. So we can take it as common. So the rate of entropy generation will equal to M dot multiplied by S exit minus S inlet minus summation of Q dot K divided by TK in this case. And this term is your represent what? Delta S. And we have learned how to calculate Delta S. If the working if fluid is a steam or refrigerant, I will be using the table. If it is incompressible substance, solid or liquid, I will use the equation CV, C multiplied by ln T2 over T1. If it is gas, we have constant specific heat approach and variable specific heat, and we have learned how to calculate Delta S. This rate of heat transfer in this equation is calculated from the first law of thermodynamic. For single stream, if you recall the first law of thermodynamic, Q dot minus work dot equal to M dot multiplied by H2 minus H1 plus V2 squared minus V1 squared divided by 2 plus G multiplied by Z2 minus Z1. So this rate of heat transfer will be calculated from the first law of thermodynamic. Then I have to substitute here, and it should be substituted with this design can be positive, can be negative, and it is zero in case when we have an adiabatic system. Is that clear, Shiva? So just the things are uh, now are just related. To calculate the entropy generation, I have to apply the first law of thermodynamics, then I calculate the heat transfer, then substitute in this equation. And also we have to calculate delta S. We have learned how to calculate delta S depending on the working fluid. What working fluid is there, then I can calculate delta S. Multiply it by mass flow rate minus summation of QK divided by PK. That should equal to the entropy generation. And as you have this summation sign, usually for any problem, you single source transfer. So usually this term would be Q divided by the temperature. Temperature is the temperature at which the heat is transferred. So if the heat is transferred from a system to the surrounding, this temperature Shibab, is the temperature of the surrounding. It will be given for you. The temperature at which is the heat is transferred. Okay. Type is that clear, Shabab? Yes, yes. Type, is there something missing? So we uh, said for steady, steady. And it's steady flow. Okay. So this will be the last, and we will end with it. So we said for a steady flow, this is the general the equation. And for single stream, we can just remove the submission sign of the flow, and then we can give the image. So, let's consider the last case when we have steady flow devices. The second case when we have unsteady flow. So, the second for open system, when we have unsteady flow, like a charging or discharging, how we can calculate the entropy generation in this case. This is the four. In case of unsteady flow, we consider the total form of entropy, not the rate form, like the closed system. So we consider entropy N minus entropy out plus the entropy generation. This form should equal to the change of entropy 
within the system. Okay. But for a closed system, if you have a consider, we said mass is constant. So the delta S will equal to mass multiplied by S2 minus S1. But in this case, for unsteady flow, mass is not constant. We have mass inlet minus mass exit equal to the mass final mass minus the initial mass. We said if you recall unsteady flow like it's charging or discharging, mass is not constant. That means in this case, delta S will equal to what? M2 multiplied by specific entropy S2. Minus M1 multiplied by multiplied by S1. And this is the pair with delta S. This is this thing. Okay. So what about entropy in and entropy out? This is an open system on a steady flow. Either we have flow in it charging, or the system is this charging, we have flow out and we don't have flow in. But anyway, we have flow either in or out. So that means we have Energy transfer, entropy transfer by mass, which is mass flow, mass flow multiplied by the end. And we have also entropy transfer by heat. If we have heat transfer, it will equal to some mission of Q divided by T. Type that means the entropy generation for a closed system. We can take those two terms to the other side, will equal to summation of mass exit, S exit, minus summation of mass end, S end. Minus what is your Minus submission of over T. Over T. Q over T, QK over TK. We said K is this parameter, one, two, three, like this. Are we missing something? Yes, so please don't forget this. So M2 S2 minus M1 S1. And this is the equation to calculate the entropy generation for honesty. Okay. S2 minus M S1. This is the initial and the final input. This term, if you recall, if we have single stream, single flow in, then I will remove the submission. It will be mass exit S exit minus mass in the S in. But if we have a charging, we have mass in and we don't have mass out. So in case of we have one steady flow in a charging process, this term should equal to zero because we have mass in and we don't have mass out. But if the system is discharging, discharging or leaking, that means we have mass out but we don't have mass in. And in this case, this term should be equal to zero. Same rule, the Shabab will be applied for unsteady problem. So the case of unsteady problem, unsteady flow, if you recall actually the energy equation, we said Q minus work will equal to summation of M exit S exit minus summation of M, M exit H exit minus summation of M inlet H inlet plus M2 U2 minus M1 U1. This is the energy equation. So from the energy equation, I will calculate the heat transfer, come back here and substitute. Then in this case, I can apply the entropy generation principle and then I can say summation uh, that should equal to summation of M mass exit multiplied by S exit minus mass in S inlet and then I can substitute to calculate the entropy image. So this heat transfer of this term is calculated from the first law of thermodynamics. So it will be the same problem on a steady flow. I'll ask you to calculate the heat transfer, then come back in this equation and substitute in this case. Okay. But can we have a Shabab uh, a problem of unsteady flow and ask you to calculate the entropy generation. If the working fluid is, let's say, gas or incompressible substance, can we do that? Because in case of gas or incompressible substance, we have a relation to calculate delta S, not S at a given state. But here for unsteady flow, if you look at the case of a steady flow and the case of closed the system, usually I have for a closed system M S2 minus S1, or for open system it will be M dot multiplied by S exit minus S end. And in both cases we have here this is delta S, and we have a relation to calculate delta S in case of gas or in case actually of incompressible substance. So here in this case, do we have delta S? or S at a given state. 
Inside the seven states. At a given state. So that means if it comes to you in your exam, and I ask you to calculate entropy generation for unsteady flow problem, we don't have table to give you the S at a given state unless the working fluid is what is shivered. Is refrigerant or steam? For refrigerant or steam, we have the table and it can give you the value of S at a given state, either exit or inlet. Okay, but I cannot give you unsteady problem for the case of air and ask you to calculate the entropy generation. Because for air, we don't have able to give me the entropy at a given state, just we have a relation to give me delta S. And this equation require me to calculate the entropy at a given state. This is what we said. You can check this. And in any case, if I, if I ask you to calculate the entropy generation, this should be a positive value. Entropy generation cannot be a negative value. Okay? Because we said any process is actual, should be actual process. And any actual process should result in some entropy generation. And it should be a positive value based on the second law of thermodynamics. Okay. I know maybe you didn't uh, went, you didn't go actually through chapter seven material, but just to try to follow. And you will see that that entropy generation should be a positive value based on the second law of thermodynamics. Okay. He said, Steam at 7 megapascal at the 450 degrees C is throttled in a valve. So we have a throttling process. We have learned it from chapter 5. In case when we have a throttling valve, throttling pump, we have applied the first law equation, and the equation has been reduced that actually the enthalpy at the end of the throttling valve, H1, is the same as the enthalpy at the outlet, H2 in this case. He said we have this throttling process and he gave you the pressure of steam. So we have B1 and we have T1. And he gave you the final pressure B. He said we have throttling valve, apply the first law equation based on chapter 5. So we have H2 is the same as H1. So the second property here is H2 is the same as H2 is the same as H1. And he need to calculate the entropy generation per unit mass in kilojoule per kilogram kilo. Okay, sure. So throttling valve is a steady flow device, a steady flow open system, single stream. So the rate of entropy generation will equal to what? M dot multiplied by S exit minus S inlet minus summation of Q divided by T. In the throttling do we have heat transfer? Uh, no. No, because actually we have developed this H1 equal to H2 based on the first law, Q dot minus work dot equal to M dot H2 minus H1 plus kinetic plus potential. We neglected kinetic and the potential, and we said we don't have work, just we have flow. <coughs> and this throttling valve is, has a small dimension, so there is no actual possibility to have heat transfer. So it is a diabetic, and based on that we said H1 is the same as H2. <coughs> So this term should be what is about? Should be zero. You don't need to tell you that the throttling valve is at the back. Should be able to know that it is at the back already. So this term is zero. Five here we have, this is the rate of entropy generation in kilowatt per kilogram. If we just divide this equation by the mass flow rate, then in this case that should equal to S exit minus S inlet. And this should be calculated in kilojoule per kilogram per kilogram. Just I divided this equation as well by the mass flow rate. So I can get it the specific uh, entropy. Can we get S exit and S end? Can we? Yes, yes, yes. So we have B1 and T1, and the working fluid is a steam. So steam, I will be using a steam tape. So at B1, T1, you can go and get those properties, okay? I can, I have to get first of all H1 and I can get S1. But before this, you have to do the check. With this pressure, get the saturation temperature, compare it with the given temperature, specify the state, either it is, either it is sub, uh, sub cold uh, or saturated or superheated. Then you have learned how to calculate the problem. Anyway, I will get H1 and S1. And for the second state, the exit, we have B2. And we have, based on the energy equation, H1 is the same as H2. So H2 will equal to H1. I got H1. 
and I have the pressure V2, then I can take those two properties and go to the table, and then I can get actually S2 or S exit in this case. Okay? So, is that clear, Shiva? Then I can calculate the entropy generation within this throttling bulb. As I told you, that should be a positive value. For any case, it should be a positive value. Okay? Uh, Abdullah, Kurai Abdullah, are you following this? Is it clear? Um, yes, yes, doctor. Okay. Right, let's solve another. As you can see, Shabab, it is the same problem like what we have learned in Chapter 5. Apply the first law of thermodynamic. Then, in this case, I will ask you to calculate the entropy generation. Apply the equation for the entropy generation. If the system won't have heat transfer, so it is a diabetic, then I can calculate the entropy generation. Okay? Type here is another problem. He said we have a 50 kilogram block of iron at 500 Kelvin. It's just dropped down in a lake or something. Lake, which is a big amount of water. So this lake actually, its temperature is atmospheric temperature is 285 Kelvin. So what we expect, so it will cool down. So the heat will be transferred to the surrounding lake in this case. He gives you the specific heat, sea average, 0.45 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin for this iron, okay? And we need to calculate the change of entropy of this iron block. Iron is what? We have learned how to calculate delta S. And in this case, we have iron block. Which kind of substance we have in this case? Incompressible. Incompressible substance. So to calculate delta S, we have learned how to calculate delta S for incompressible substance. Delta S is equal to, based on the TDS relation, equal to C average, the specific heat of the incompressible substance, which we get from table A3. In this problem, he just gave you the specific heat directly, so you don't need to go to table A3. So we have learned to calculate delta S for incompressible substance, which is iron in this case, will equal to the total entropy will equal to M multiplied by C average ln T2 divided by ln T2 divided by T1. So Shabab, the equation that we have developed for this delta S was the specific delta S, specific entropy in kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. I need to calculate the total entropy in kilojoule per Kelvin. So I have to multiply by mass, okay? So that should equal to, we give you the mass of iron is 50, the specific heat of iron is given equal to 0.45. But in this case, Shabab, if this specific heat is not given for incompressible substance from table A3 at the average temperature, which is T1 plus T2 divided by 2, I can go to the table A3 for iron, the working fluid is iron, the working substance, sorry, then I can get CA. In this problem, he just give you the value directly, okay? Then it will be mass C average multiplied by ln T2 over T1. This block of iron has initial temperature T1 is equal to 500 degrees C. And it is dropped down in a lake, the temperature of the lake as well as the final state of iron. It should approach the temperature of the lake at the, the thermal equilibrium state. So T2, the temperature of the lake is equal to 285 Kelvin. This is Kelvin as well, 500 Kelvin. So this temperature, Shabab, still I have seen some of you have substituted the temperature in uh, degree Celsius. I cannot substitute it in degree Celsius unless I have the difference, T1 minus T2. So it doesn't matter Kelvin or Celsius. But like the coefficient of performance, maximum one, T low divided by T high minus T low. This T low, this one should be in Kelvin. We cannot substitute it in degree Celsius. This T high minus T low, it can be in Kelvin or degree Celsius because this difference will be the same. But this temperature shape should be not in Kelvin. Or you can just make it a flat rule. Just substitute any temperature in Kelvin and it will not come wrong anyway. Okay, because I have seen some of you from the last quiz have substituted the temperature in Kelvin in degree Celsius. Okay, so T2 is 285, 285, and T1 is equal to 500, then I can calculate delta S. If you calculate this value, you will find it negative value. 
But don't tell yourself that I have told you that delta S is always positive. No, delta S can be positive or it can be negative, depending on the direction of the heat transfer. If the heat is lost, that means it's a sign is negative. So delta S may be negative in this case. Okay, but what is always positive is the entropy generation. That is always positive. But delta S may be positive or negative. Okay. Type A said we need to calculate the entropy generated during this process. Type the entropy generated, we have block of iron. This is the iron. It has transferred the heat to the surrounding lake. This lake is existing at temperature 285 K. Okay. Type in order to calculate the entropy generation, we need to calculate what is about the heat transfer. Type how we can calculate the heat transfer in this case. First law. First law of thermodynamics. For this case, this is a block of iron that is a closed system, so it will be Q minus what is equal to delta U. Okay. And in this case, we don't have work. Just we have heat is transferred, so heat will equal to delta U. And delta U for incompressible substance is equal to what is equal mass multiplied by what C average multiplied by what. T2 minus T1. So for incompressible substance, like the case of solid, delta U, we have learned it from chapter 4, delta U will equal to C average multiplied by T2 minus T1. C average is the average specific heat at the average temperature. Here in this problem, it just give us this value. So that should equal to mass, which is 50 of iron, multiplied by specific heat of iron, multiplied by the temperature difference T2, don't write down the maximum, the higher temperature minus the lower temperature. T2, the final temperature of iron, it should approach the temperature of the water in the lake, which is 285, minus the initial temperature, which is 500. And when you calculate this Q, it should be negative. Okay, Shabbat? So in the solution here, I have considered delta S for the lake. The change of entropy of the lake would equal to the heat transfer, the Divided by the temperature. But for the lake, lake actually is absorbing heat. Iron is losing heat. Lake is what is receiving this heat. So it is positive. That's why it is positive here. And it should, but actually this value should be T2 minus T1. And T2 is less than T1, it should be negative sign. That's why when it comes to calculate the entropy generation, in this case, I will say the entropy generation for a closed system should equal to what? Mass multiplied by S2 minus S1, mass multiplied by delta S, which is this step. We just calculated this step, which is minus 12 point something. Okay, this is this step. Minus summation of Q, K divided by TK. We don't have summation, just we have only one heat transfer. But this heat transfer should be substituted here with its negative sign. Negative sign, so that term will come positive in this case. Okay, so the temperature of the lake is 285, the temperature at which the heat is transferred. We have calculated this term from the first law equation for a closed system, and this term already we have calculated, which is minus 12 minus something. Then we can calculate the entropy generation. Entropy generation, as I told, by any means, it should be a positive value. You can check those numbers. Okay.